Hello and welcome to everyone joining us for this preview, which is pre-recorded on Sunday, early Sunday morning for Monday Racing, the 29th of May. Fairview Racing takes place on the poly track. Just having a quick look, we have an eight race program. So the bar pot will kick off in the very first race, which is due off at 12.30. As is the norm, our racing expert that side of the world is none other than the man himself. Welcome on the line. How are you doing this morning? Morning, Sheldon. Morning, punters. Now all good this side. At least we have some beautiful weather the last two days. I don't know how long it's going to last, though. There we go. Grant Paddock on the line. He's going to guide us through the selections. And let's get straight into the opening leg of the bar pot, which kicks off at 12.30. And when looking at the first race, I see number seven, Marie Marie from the Glen Cotson stable. They had the two lo runs locally there and perhaps an extra one there in between. That was reserved last time out. This is going to be your best bet on the card? Yeah, Sheldon, very, very hard to beat this filly. Lovely first run. She'd been on the surface now. She came from off the pace, uh, ran on very strongly behind the greet. Um, they never they never raced her on Friday. Obviously, this was a better better kind of a field for her. Um, I think she got the spot on race here. It's going to be very, very hard to beat. I also feel that the price around 12 to 10 is generous. She'll probably start in the red. Well, just looking at some of the exchanges, there is some 17 to 10 available. So if you shop around 17 to 10, like you mentioned, 12 to 10 looked good. 17 to 10, if you can take that, fire up in the first race. 100% get your money for the exotics for the rest of the day. I think she's the right filly in the race. The dangers to her, obviously, short, sharp, shot coming out the same form line. She just, just needed it last time out, but she's drawn out badly at 11. You've got the, the, the professional maiden, Siberian Fox, who can run into the money. Um, he's got to improve on his last run. And then uh, the two horse there, well, that's Siberian Fox, the five. Uh, 105th Avenue, I see um, Clippy's put Louis up first time out, Richard up first time out, and um, they normally need a run, but the, that Cape Town formers should be good enough to be in the bunny. Taking us on to race number two, which will be the opening leg of the place accumulator. This will be run over 1,600 metres. Your two selections will be numbers one and two for the bar pot, and that's the way they're betting. Number one, Downing Seven is trading at 15 to 10. Number two, Law Court is at 33 to 10. And then you can get pretty much six to one and seven to one, the balance of the field. Kicking off with number one, Downing Seven, making the local debut there. Just looking at some of the form lines from Cape Town, could be a cut above this field? Yeah, Sheldon, he's got the right form to win the race. But I must say, these horses that have come up uh, from Cape Town, from Brett to, to Jean, they seem to need one or two runs just to get to their, their peak fitness. So I'm a little bit sceptical on this one. I, I do think he'll be in the top two. But I think they've got to beat this horse, Law Court. He's a solid front runner, got a good draw. Lungus had his yard in wonderful shape at the moment. He had a good winner on Friday. Uh, I think he's going to get out there. And the way that poly has been running at the moment, you can't give them start. You've got to be up there first two or three. Um, and then you've you got a solid winning chance. So I think Law Court will actually beat the one. I'm going the two from the one. And then down the bottom, 10 and 11, to fill up the, the, the minor places. But um, I, I, I'm with Law Court in this one, Sheldon. Excellent. So there we have it. Grand Paddock's going to be with number two, Law Court. It is tried and tested. And rather go with what you know than what you don't know. So number two, Law Court, the horse to beat. And number one, Downing Seven will keep a close eye making the local introduction. As we move on to race number three, which will be over 1,900 metres, dual for 13.40. Just having a quick look, race number three will be the opening leg of the pick six, having a look at the betting year, number four, Aerial View. I liked her last time out when she raced up handy and she stayed on to beat Cavian's Cora. So I give her a big chance and I see Grant's got her in the selections. Number six, Wildest Dreams is a 33 to 10, Aerial View 19 to 10. This horse, Aerial View, earlier on she took on some higher opposition and it took a bit of a time to find her feet fully, but last time she showed exactly what she's capable of in your neck of the woods. 
Yeah, 100% Sheldon. You know, I made her a good thing that day. She found the right race. There's no, no doubt about it. She found the right race. This is definitely a bit stronger. I'm in the camp of wildest dreams. The you know, last time she ran over a trip that was way too far for her, and, and, they, and they used her up as well in the race. I think she'll get a much better ride from uh, Richard this time, and um, she's going to be a hard horse to beat. Aerial View, definitely the biggest danger with heart seas and um, maybe go lightly, but she's very, very temperamental. You never know what go lightly is going to come to the races. I also think she's better um, over the mile than the 1900. So I, I'm actually quite strong on Wilder's team. She's a big, solid, solid filly, and um, she, she'll give them a, a good go up there. There's no doubt. Aerial view, they both just run similarly, go up there, and um, I think they'll swing for home first, second, and they'll end up first, second as well. So um, the six and the four for me, Sheldon, and um, I don't think you need to go much further than that in, in all bets. Excellent. So narrowing race number three down to two runners, numbers four and six. So this is the leg that you can go light on as we step on the gas and move on to race number four. This is over 2,200 metres. And the current favourite is number six, which is Quasimodo, trading at around five to two. Number five, Central City, is the second pick at 33 to 10. Number eight, Jasper, is 11 to two. Now, see, you've gone with numbers two and six. Number two is Zigzag, coming off a of victory to Mtlabeni, and then third to Grazing in the Grass, where the average rating was a 92 last time out. Along with number six, Quasimodo. This is a horse who ran second to Machete Man. He's run close up behind Heathcliff. So this is a horse who's got a lot of scope still to improve, although having his 15th run, Grant. Yeah, very, very nice horse, um, Sheldon. He's, he's very well in here. He actually got 14 points for running second in the derby to Machete Man. He's, he's running off his old rating of 80, so he's, he's, he's really well in here. But I must tell you, he's taking on some hard knockers here. This horse zigzag on the poly, grows another two legs. A horse like Jacob Ladder also doesn't know how to run a bad race on the poly, especially for Louis. So it's going to be tricky. He holds Central City. He had Cherry Anno behind him in the derby, and Central City was beaten three and quarter by by uh, Sherry and so I feel he holds Central City um, the big problem here is the two hard knockers in, in, in Zigzag and Jacob's Ladder but I still think he's got the class to win it I'm going to tip him to win it from Zigzag, Jacob's Ladder and Central City so the big plus is you're going to take advantage in this race here and hope the number six Quasimoto's got the firepower to beat them and you'll follow up with number two Zigzag. So quite a few horses who absolutely thrive on the poly here and it'll be a very, very interesting race, race number four over 2,200 metres. That'll take us on to race number five. And quite interesting, once again, these classified stakes where you look at the best weighted column, it's over 1,600 metres. They got two joint top weighted here, 12 state of mind, and at this stage, number 16, Opera Swing, they're at a 74 in the computer form. Number 17, Miss United States, who's a reserve runner, is right there. Then you've got the 14 and the 3. Now, Grant, when you look at the classified stakes for horses with a net rating of 71 and below, you've got to tread a little bit warily. You do, you do. Um, normally favours the fillies, to be very honest with you, these kind of races. You know, that's why, but I see, I see there's not too many of them that are going to have a chance here. State of mind, maybe, but probably would have preferred it a bit further. Um, she's got a bit of work to do, I think. Uh, very seldom do they put two runs the same together. Uh, very tricky race. My value bet on the day is in this race, in number 13, Grand Destiny. I thought he's a very, very big runner at the wrong price yet today. Well drawn, Yeni up. Uh, he got beaten ahead by Cherry Anu. Cherry Anu is now on 93, he ran fourth in the derby. Any kind of a run close to that, and he should put this field to sleep. He's won over the course and distance, and he's won well that day when he did win. So uh, he's a big, big runner. Um, the likes of Alado's Pride, Gunsmoke, um, Bournemouth is the favourite. I don't know so much about Bournemouth. He comes from way off the pace over Ramar, over 1,300 last time out. He's drawn 15. So he's going to have to be making up a lot of ground, and that's not going to be easy on our poly. This other horse is holding form well, Passion Tuwali. Um, he's stepping up to the mile now. I'm not sure. He has been running on, but it's his third run, prime run for him now. Oh, so he's got to be a runner, but um, I'm actually I'm actually quite strong on the 13 year at a big price, and you're going to have to add the five, six, and ten, and for bigger perms also um, a lot of pride definitely. 
Excellent. So you heard there from Grand Paddock at around 8 and 10 to 1. Number 13, Grand Destiny. Muzieni from a neat draw. This could just be the value package as far as race number 5 goes. So throw this horse into all your equations. Maybe a few all to comes and some place all to comes. 13, Grand Destiny. Race number six, dual fat 1525 over 1400 meters. Having a quick look at the anti post betting, we're number one, Belle of Belize, a clear cut favorite at 18 to 10, nine to two about number 11, Pinnacle, and then eight to one and better the rest of the field. I see you've got numbers one and six here. Number six, Carbonado's trading at around 10 to one. But let's kick off with number one, Belle of Belize. She just seems to be a different mare in your side of the world that side she absolutely loves the distance four of her six wins have come over the distance and she's a horse with richard very in the irons who could be quite tough to crack yeah very tough to beat honestly um she looks like the uh, the, the bet for the day looks like a, a banker in everything i have backed her up with carbonado coming in with a low weight um with, and she's got solid solid um uh, body track form so uh, she's the only danger to me but I, I think this horse will win and win comfortably Bella Belize uh, bigger terms you know, look at horses like Wishful Girl Lynn uh, I'm not sure on, on, on the one at the bottom of the way it's Pinnacle I see she's second favourite but she's coming off 140 days so she might just need to run I think Bella Belize once again found the right kind of a race and going to be a very very hard horse to beat what do you make of number three, Wishful Girl Lynn? Because she's a seven-time winner. All seven wins have been on the poly. She was 2.9 lengths behind Bella Belize last time out. Would you make her more of an exacta and trifecta horse? Definitely, I'm pu I put her in third. She can she can easily run second as well. Uh, very uh, very good uh, second run. Yes, she ran on very strongly on the grass actually, and as a second run after. But this is her peak run. Sunday lay up from a good draw. She's got to be in the first three. Right, let's move on to race number seven as we get a cracking along over 1,200 metres. And just looking at the current time of recording, 11 horses will go down to the post, where number two, Bonnaroo, is the 14 to 10 favourite. Has that 11 draw to negate, but look who's riding Richard Faree in search of the hat trick. Let's get straight to number two, Bonnaroo, yeah, Grant from the Alan Creof stable. This daughter, Rafif, She's absolutely blitzed in her last two runs, but from a 67, she's gone up to an 81 in the ratings. Do you believe she's still better than an 81? Well, her runs seem to be better, and this, this field is not anywhere close to her, I don't think, Sheldon. She, you know, the way this filly has been running, and uh, you always say, oh, she's got a penalty, she can't do it, she's drawn out badly. She's won from bad, bad draws, 11 out of 16, 14 out of 14. I don't even look at the, at, at the draw column when it comes to her. She's got so much gate speed. She gets there and then idles, quickens on the turn and, and, and puts them to bed. Um, there's going to be a lot of speed here with glass shoes. Glass shoes can really get along, but she doesn't get a six furlong. So um, I think Bonnaroo is going to have this race. She, she'll probably end up sitting just off um, glass shoes, but uh, I think she'll run past him. And I think this is Kreef's double race of six and seven. Bonnaroo, very hard to beat. Um, Vizu's Magic can run a place, there's no doubt. And then... Obviously, Pam's princess was ready to fly. But um, also, I think there's another banker here, Sheldon. The, the punters can go the Kreef 2 bankers race of 6 and 7 in, in Bonnaroo. Excellent. So two potential bankers on the card. So potentially making it a lot easier for the punters. And hopefully they come through and do the business for you, the punter out there. Ending off the meeting, over 1,300 metres at 16.35 will be race number 8. Looking at the betting, number four, Silver Stardust is at 22 to 10 anti post. Number two, Fiery Duke is at 6 to 1. And then number 12, Call Me Mr. Greenlight at around 7 to 1 with cool runnings. And number one, Burning Wings. First up, Grant, I have to chat to you about number one, Burning Wings. I made this my value selection last time out, and I was looking to count the cash, and unfortunately, Dennis Schwartz, he got his suspension for the ride. This horse should have won last time out. Yeah, no doubt. Um, definitely misjudged that a bit. A um, little bit tougher this time, I can tell you that right now. Um, he got beaten in the head by Passion Diwali. Um, this horse... Call me Mr. Greenlight. Uh, I'm very strong on him, Sheldon. I, I was strong on him last time when he won. 
Um, I don't think these guys know how good this horse is. He, he really is a, a decent horse. He's been running from pathetic draws. He's got Muzi up, three draw, no lovely way to 54, extra 100 meters to finish it off even better. Um, his opening price, I think, was 8 or 10 to 1. It was completely wrong. He's closer to where he should be. Um, I'm going to make him a solid winning bet. Uh, the stable companion, a big danger in Fiery Duke. Unfortunately, he's drawn out badly, but he raced against far stronger last time out to Brendan James, who's now won three in a row. He was two lengths off that running on. The the, 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 the silver stardust, the four horse here, the favourite, he, he might battle a little bit here, Sheldon. You know, he's been coming from way off the pace in a mile and further, and um, he's drawn one, doesn't really get himself into a race early, and this could catch him out. There's no, you draw one and you give up that position, you're in big trouble, especially over 1,300. They cover you up and you eat poly for the rest of the race and have to make up six, seven lengths. It's not going to happen. Um, number nine, Pedro, also also a runner. But I think the, the Michelin Yard are, are quite strong here with the Call Me Mr. Greenlight and and the other one, the, the two the two was Fiery Duke, and I'm going to make them do and run first and second with um, Silver Spiders and uh, your horse, Burning Wings, to fill up. Excellent. Just getting back to number 12, Call Me Mr. Green Light. I remember when he started off his career in KwaZulu Natal with Dennis Dreyer. They thought the world of him. They thought that he was a real decent specimen and he'd probably be running in some of the features. And last time out, we saw a little bit of what he's all about and you mentioned he's in a real good space so from the draw everything points to him at around seven and eight to one and over this trip of 1300 meters if he brings that last run to the table he wins again yeah i'm very strong on him sheldon really i i think he's a very decent horse i think he's the head of the handicap he's at the right rating i actually said to uh, the michelin yard he's probably in a horse that could easily win three in a row of his current rating he's He's a difficult horse to train. He wants everything his own way. But um, the way he finished off that race last time from a hopeless position and from a bad draw, I, I honestly think he can go back to back. Super. That's a wrap for the Fairview meeting. We're going to take a look at Grant Paddock's selection for the day and he suggested bet. So while Grant's on the line, we'll give you those perms and then we'll bid him farewell as we bring up the slide for the suggested bet. And the best bet is race one, number seven, Marie Marie. The value bet, race five, number 13, Grand Destiny. So there you got the best and the value bet. As far as the bar pot goes, Banker 7. By numbers 1 and 2, by 4 and 6. By 2 and 6, by 5, 6 and 13. And the final leg of the bar pot, numbers 1 and 6. So Grant, looking forward to the meeting on the poly track and the guidance you've given us of utmost importance. And if the horses that you've selected, if they arrive, will be sitting very pretty at the end of the meeting. So once again, thank you very much, Grant, and have a wonderful day's racing. Thank you very much, Sheldon, and good luck to the punters tomorrow. Thanks very much to Grant Paddock on the line for the Fairview Poly Track Race Meeting. He's given us some nice shrewdies and some nice confidence on some horses on the day. So all we can say is the horses need to do it for us on the poly and then we'll see you in the winner's enclosure.